Today I'm going to show you how you can create a really cool double exposure effect in Photoshop. And we're going to sort of start from the end and cover a few different options and ways you can do it. But um, we're going to get straight into it now with this image here. And this image here I have open in Photoshop, downloaded from Unsplash. So the way it works, at the heart of it, we're going to start with the simplest, easiest way to do this. And it does rely heavily on the quality of the photos. What I'm actually going to do is I've got this image here. I'm going to, I've got my layers panel over here. If it's not there, head to windows, hit layers to turn it on. And I'm just going to simply double click to turn this into a layer. And I'm going to put the blend mode to screen. And I want to take this image here. So I'm going to hit control A and copy. So edit or command C, uh, uh, control C or command C. And I'm going to paste it in. So what I need to do is move this underneath the face and then we start to get that effect. And the way it works is because we have this on screen, anything that's dark on this layer becomes somewhat transparent and the lighter it gets, the less transparent it is. So the white is solid if it's 100% white and the black is transparent. So by popping this image on top and this image underneath, I start to get that effect. And to get an even better version of that effect, I just simply click on this, I'm gonna hit Control T and I'm going to just rotate this and resize it until I kind of like the effect that I'm getting. I can move that around. And there we have our double exposure effect on this particular person. Now, if we want to bring out some of the edges a little bit more, we can also add a new layer in between, get black and my brush tool. And I can just kind of slowly paint in those edges a little bit if I want to, and I can even play with the opacity to bring it down. So we get that edge. So that's the simplest way of doing it. Because ideally, what we want to work with if we are gonna make this happen quickly is a black and white image that has a lot of darkness that we can actually see through for the face. And then an image underneath, which has a high contrast of black and white, so that it shows through better. But sometimes it's not quite that simple. So we're actually going to look at a more difficult situation and how we can make this work there as well. So now I have this image here of this girl and this other image here with some buildings and some trees and it's a nice bright white sky again. And if the sky wasn't bright, I could actually just use my image uh, adjustments and curves to sort of make that adjustment. But we're gonna come back to that. So with this image, there's no white background. So we do have to actually kind of cut her out to get this effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new group down here by hitting this folder icon, group one. And maybe I can just say that's the face group. I'm gonna take this image here. I'm gonna double click to convert it to a layer and drag it into that folder. I'm gonna to go to select subject to basically select her. Now, if you don't, if you have issues with select subject not working, you can also use the pen tool. I will pop a link to another video showing you how to actually cut out by hand using the pen tool. But I've got this selected now. I hit select subject to select the person. And I'm going to click on this black, sorry, on this square with a circle in it to mask that image. Now what I also want to do is she's going to be, she's not really a really high contrast in person. So if I actually go, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this background image, I'm going to copy it, and I'm just going to, paste it in there and I'm going to drop it below the group. Now, if I move this to here, it may be in the group. You can see it's inset. I might need to just drag and wait for it to show up again. And now it's outside of that group underneath. It's not indented. So I can actually turn this sort of collapse this group and I have this image in the background. I can move it up. I mean, for one, it looks like I've just popped her over that background. What we're actually going to do now is expand this group and I'm going to now create another layer. And I'm gonna drag this layer down underneath and I'm gonna fill it with white. So now we have a white background with a person on it and I can take this group here, not the individual image or the white, but the group itself. And where it says pass through, I can turn that to screen. And now we can see where the effect is starting to show, but it doesn't quite look right. So we've got to make some adjustments. For one, the color doesn't necessarily suit. I don't know if the color is a great effect on this. So I, what I can do is I can adjust these individually. For now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer above this group. So down here to the circle, 
I'm going to add a hue saturation layer and I'm going to bring the saturation down so we've got a black and white layer. Now that layer's popped up in the group again, so if that happens, just drag it above the group and that way the whole image is black and white. So what we need to do is adjust the brightness of her to get more blacks and more vibrant whites. So to be safe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the area on the right here and convert it to a smart object. So now when I go to image adjustments and curves, I can make changes to the brightness without actually doing any damage to the image itself. So because the black is on the left and the white is on the right, I want to bring the, this down so we get more deeper blacks. But the problem is the white has come down too. So we need to go on the right and bring the white up so we get higher contrast. At the moment, it still doesn't look great because the image is kind of positioned a bit funny. But now we have that set up, we can go down to the image itself and we can move that around and position it how we like. And one good thing about Photoshop is I can hit Control T or edit and free transform. And I can rotate this to get a cool effect like I did with the last image. I'm gonna hold down Alt and my mouse wheel to zoom out and I'm just gonna position this the way I want to position it. Now the effect still isn't great because we've got this gray sort of background here. What we can do is again, convert to a smart object and go to image adjustments and curves. And I can take the white again. I can even just drag this in to sort of make the white brighter. And now we get this effect. But there's a bit more that we can do with that as well. You'll notice before I had this adjustment layer sitting in the group and it made her black and white, but not the image in the background. I can put that back in that layer above her. I can make her grayscale and have a color image. On top of that, what I can do is even click above this layer here, add a new layer above it. And I can get say a dark color. Maybe I'll select one from the image. And I can even draw in some dark color as well, just to add a little bit of shadow and play with the effect a bit further. Now, one thing I really like about this is the ability to have some objects stick out as well. Now, I just want to stop for a second because I had an issue recording this where for some reason the mouse pointer became really huge and I couldn't actually shrink it down. So I've turned the mouse pointer off and I've just got a little yellow dot showing you where the mouse goes. I'm actually going to just bring this up. I'm going to go up to my group again up here and What's happening is this white area here is kind of blocking out. If I was to get my eraser, which is pretty huge at the moment, I could actually just erase that. But what if I want to have like a slightly different background or something like that? What I can do is I can click on this layer, make sure I have nothing selected, and I can go down here to create a mask. So I'm going to add layer mask to turn that on. Now also, it looks a bit confusing with a white layer and a white layer mask. I'm gonna click on this mask, hit Control or Command I to invert it so it's turned off so you can see if I turn that layer off, that's what we get. But what I wanna do is actually get my brush tool and choose black on the left. And I'm gonna come down to our background image and if I'm happy with where it's positioned, I can go to Select Sky. I then hit Select and Inverse to invert that selection. And now if I go back over to this mask, I can paint in some black and reveal bits and pieces of that image. So now we get this sort of cool effect here with a little bit of a bit sticking out here, but I can always go back into this mask, choose the white and just decrease my brush size and tidy that up a bit if I want to. So now we've got this sort of relatively cool effect uh, we can also, once again, I can add in, I can add in some shading if I want to. I can go back up here. I can choose a nice dark color or a gray color. I get my brush out, maybe I make it a bit bigger by hitting the square bracket on my keyboard. And I can kind of draw in piece, pieces again if I want to, just to bring them alive a little bit. just to give it a little bit of character. And we can still see her face there. If we feel like 
it's being interfered with from the background image a little too much. Again, I can make my brush smaller with the square brackets on my keyboard or just by going up here. And I can just sort of fix up certain areas to clean it up. And now just to give it a little bit of a, f a finishing touch, what I can do, I can actually add a bit of background color here around the subject just to lift it off the page a little bit. So the way I do that is I can actually hold down control over my subject to select. I can then get my paint bucket, choose a different color. So maybe, maybe I pick something like this color here and lighten it up a bit just so it pops off a little bit. And I can actually go up to my layer at my group, I should say, add another layer above it. So I drag this above the group and I can just fill it with that color. Although I actually want to invert this selection. So I go to select inverse and then I fill. But there is an issue now that has cut off the objects that we wanted in here. So the simple solution for that is if I control click on this mask down here, I can see the mask where I actually removed where that's popping out. I can hold down control on that mask to select sort of what's visible and what's not. Now again, I go to select and inverse and then I can come back up to here and just simply hit delete if I want to. And now we can actually have a bit of a cutout color effect. It's actually a little bit strong, so I'm gonna dial it back. So it's just subtle. So you can do a little bit more with it. And of course you can play with the color. I can click on this image. I can go to my image adjustments, hue and saturation, and I can even dial that color around to get a completely different effect. I can crank up the hue and saturation, which I don't think looks very good. I can dial it down a bit, but overall, what we get is a reasonably cool effect. And again, there's a few little things you might want to touch up like this white here. There's a bit of white on the hat still showing through. If I want to, I can simply leave that in there because it's actually part of the hat. Or I can just add a new layer above this. I hold down Alt between the two to clip it and I can just simply paint some black over that area to free it up. So that's another way you can create a cool double exposure effect. Now, this probably isn't the best result, what I've done here today, but it does illustrate the process pretty well, I think. So all you need to do is find some photos, have a play, and actually just think about, have a play with how this is done. Think about what you want to see, experiment, and um, see what you can come up with. You can get some pretty nifty results when you use your imagination in this process. So um, I highly recommend you have a play with it and uh, let me know what you think. So that's the video for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.